does it actually matter how we set up our organizational units? Let's talk about that. Hi and welcome to our tutorial series on how to master the Google Admin Console. My name is Leon. I work for the company called Cloudwise, the creators of the Cool School platform. We help schools in how to use IT within education. And within this series, we like to share our knowledge and experience with you on how to set up the Google Admin Console. In this specific video, we will cover how to structure your Google Admin Console and what things you should consider when setting up a new structure. So what is an organizational unit? Or rather, as some people call it, an OU. An organizational unit is a way to structure your environment by placing users or devices within them. The idea behind that is, is that within the structure, you can set certain policies or different settings based on the level that you put this setting on. So as you can imagine, it's very important to set up a good structure because if we have the top layer, everything that is underneath it will by default get the same settings and policies. Now, people who are used to being a system administrator and possibly have experience with how this works on server environments with Active Directories and such, this will be something that's quite familiar to you. But if you are rather new to system administration, then it's good to know how this works. To get an overview of all the organizational units and to edit any of them, we of course have to go to organizational units. You'll find this on your dashboard. One of the buttons that we find here is organizational units. So we go there. And then we have a basic outline of the structure. Now, as you may have been the one who actually set up your Google environment, you'll see that the main domain, the main email address, as it were, will be set as the root organizational unit. Root meaning the very top layer of your environment. Underneath the root layer, we have several other layers that we have already created. I have two examples that I will show in the video later. But if we want to add anything here, we create a new organizational unit. If I do so, I need to fill in a few details. I filled in a name. And as you can see, we can also set a description. Now, description is very useful. I recommend every admin to take the time to also fill in a description for organizational units. The reason why is that now you may have a very clear idea of what kind of users or settings you may want to do here. But the reason you might want to consider to add a description is so that you will also know at a later time. Especially when you make specific organizational units for specific users or groups, it is very useful to know, especially later, why in the first place you created this. Now, I have the name here of Cloud School. It's going to be a new school. Then we can say what the parent organizational unit will be. Now, if I go here, then I can pick from any of the current existing organizational units. Now, I could place this under, for example, a district that I've already added to this environment. But for now, I will create it as a new school underneath edu.cloudwise.nl and click Create. Now that I have created this organizational unit and I hover over it with my mouse, you will see to the right that we have a few options. One of them being to create a new sub-organizational unit. What, for example, could be one for employees, one for students, maybe one specifically for devices. We can also decide to move this organizational unit so we can place it underneath a different space within our current structure. And last, we have the option to add it, meaning we can add it both the title and the description. And of course, we can remove them. Now, we can only remove them once there are no longer any users left in the organizational unit. So this is something to bear in mind. So now that we have the structure in front of us, why is this so important? Well, you see, um, if we have certain things that we want to change within our organization, for example, I want to set student access to chat to only be active or available for students from a certain age then that will be quite difficult to do if we don't actually make a proper structure. So what would we need there? Well, we need at least a 
separation between employees and students, but also underneath students, we need to differentiate between certain age groups. Now, if we have that for one school, I could of course go and create a new uh, sub organization. I create students, then I create a organization per class or per age group, which might seem like a lot of work, but will actually pay off in the long run because then you can create those very specific settings. Because what would happen if I would just go and change anything on the layer edu.clockwise.nl? Everything that I set here will by default be inherited by any layer underneath it. And thus, it is very important to actually make sure that you also pick the specific organizational unit layer you want to make any changes to. But in the first place, you need to organize that in a proper way. So then why is it important to set this up correctly? Now, maybe you haven't thought about this when you set up Google Workspace. No problem at all. You can still, of course, set this up and change it later. The reason that it's important to do so is not just because you keep overview of where things are, but it will also make your life as an admin a lot more easy. Because the moment that you are responsible for making changes in policies across a big organization, for example, an entire district, then the way that you set up your structure is very important. Now, I will show you two distinctly different versions of how you could set up your organizational unit structure. We have District A. So District A has the district level, and then we have an organizational unit for every school. And then underneath every school, we have uh, devices, employees, and students. These are some basic ones, but obviously you could maybe think of uh, some other organizational units you might want to add. Uh, such as a specific staff group for um, the directors or school leaders. Maybe you want to make a separate one for any supporting uh, personnel that is uh, not actually teaching staff. But what is the core idea behind this structure? Within this structure, we want to make separate settings for every school. But also, due to the way that this has been set up, anything that we might want to change based on a specific role, for example, for all students within the district, that would mean that we'd have to go through every school and change them individually per school. Same goes for employees and the same goes for devices. The reason why a district might choose for this setup is to give more autonomy per school on how they want to manage their Google environment and how they set their policies. It's quite possible that in this setting of District A, every school has their own administrator that has access to at least their own piece of the Google Admin Console that is relevant for their own school. How to set up administrator roles and privileges, we will cover that in a future video. But what about District B? District B has a very different approach. As you can tell, it immediately starts differently after I show what is underneath the level of District B, we start off with devices, employees, and students. So the difference between District A and B is that District B sets the policies on the top level. So we can tell that District B has a overarching policy on devices, employees, and students, which can then be ignored or changed on a uh, specific school. But the idea behind this is, is that if we have a certain policy that we need to set for all students, we just have to do that on the students layer. And if we want to change that for a specific school, then we simply go to a school, for example, school A, and we change it there. We find that district B, as an example, um, often works very well, especially when we have a large school group or a district uh, or a foundation of schools because this is something that makes it a lot easier to manage, a lot easier to have one spot to put all your settings in, instead of having to do this in several different places. Um, and it will simply save you a lot of time as an admin. So now you know what an organizational unit is, how to create one, why it's important to think about organizational unit structure, and you have some of our best practices on how to set one up yourself. If you found this video helpful, let us know by liking the video and subscribing to our channel. If you want to learn more after watching this video, do check out any of the other videos on our channel. 
If you don't want to miss out on any of our future uploads, also make sure that you turn on notifications. We plan on doing a new upload every week, so stay tuned for more short how-to videos on how to master the Google Admin Console. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.